In this episode of Hot Hardware's Two and a Half Geeks, we'll have Apple's latest follies and a bold move. Some uh, weak sauce ketchup, I might add, as well. And Intel's nyuk, 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 and a little red magic newbie of goodness. You know what I'm talking about. And details of our next giveaway. <laughs> next. Marco, don't laugh or anything. I didn't want to interrupt your intro, man. You were working it. <laughs> That was some that was a rough intro and all kinds of roughness in general. How's it going today, fellas? It's going. <laughs> it's a going. Yes, I have to bring up the stream because uh, I don't have it handy here. But uh, welcome back to yet another episode of Hot Hardware's Two and a Half Geeks, the show where we're uh, playing catch up by the minute. Gosh dang it! And Chris, fighting Skype every step of the way. Because yes. as you can see right now, when I click over to Marco, I don't have his video in here for some reason. Oh, no. Yours is pulling fine. So I'm going to have to fight with that for a minute. Really? Okay. So Marco's not Marco's feed isn't working. Yeah, I, I can probably, see him in Skype. It's probably best that nobody sees me anyway. I don't oh, know. Okay. We'll do it All live. Right. And, is, and, and am I pulling quality, like, bitrate or whatever? No, you're you're about 360p that I'm stretching across, but at least I can see you. <laughs> Someone Dude, else, please implement NDI support so that we can get off of Skype, because the NDI <laughs> is really handy, but uh, having to yeah. use Skype is not. No, apparently not. Well, anyways, hey, we'll we'll keep soldiering on. I don't know what, but my uh, my feed locally looks good. I have a I have a hunch this might be something to do with uh, Open Broadcaster. But let's let's dive in. Apple uh, had all kinds of uh, interesting news this week uh, out of WWDC, and let's just say they uh, they made a couple of statements. Boy, howdy, they, they did they. Um, we have. Uh, we have a couple of pieces up, uh, you know, picking up on their news and uh, and their announcements. And uh, Apple announces its own processors for Macs with systems shipping this year. So the big shift, the seismic shift, as we called it in one of our articles as well, is happening. Apple is shifting to their own silicon for a certain uh, new Macs that they will introduce sometime this year. And then a transition to their own custom silicon over the course of two years. So um, a real bold move. Um, they are parting ways with Intel. Uh, for Intel, I'm not so sure it's a huge deal. Um, there's um, you know, uh, only a certain amount of market share that uh, Apple commands in PCs and laptops where Intel is prevalent. A lot of Apple silicon drives, tablets, and smartphones now, obviously, for the company. So this is really about notebooks and workstations for Apple um, in terms of the, the customer uh, within Intel. Um, so, you know, interesting, interesting change uh, of uh, direction. And it will be interesting to watch the market impact. It will also be interesting to watch how well Apple executes. Marco, what do you think their chances are? I think their <laughs> chances of executing are 100%. Um, it's not going to be perfectly smooth. I actually wrote about this a couple of years ago, and the Apple fanboys jumped all over me because I said the transition to ARM would not be seamless. And uh, you know, everybody's like, oh, they've been planning for this for ages, blah, blah, blah. The fact is there's tons of apps that aren't produced on Apple's APIs um, that can't just simply be easily recompiled and work on ARM, so they're going to have to run through emulation. And as we know, emulation isn't always smooth. So... Watching Apple's presentation was pretty impressive, but everyone has to understand that the proof is in the pudding and what Apple showed on a pre-recorded demo is not necessarily indicative of how everyone's experience is going to be. And they made some funky claims, like to claim that, I think it was a, what the A14Z, the, the same SOC that's in um, the current iPad Pro, you know, was faster than most laptops. Yeah, yeah that's, that's crap. Like if you're using... <laughs> specific silicon on there for certain tasks yes you can like especially like for touch and latency i have no doubt apple's done more optimization than anybody else so they can make some claims that those socs will be faster but um if you're you know working on some high-end video rendering or doing work in something like photoshop or, uh, there's no way that these that that development kit is faster than a laptop 
whether it plays out when they actually, you know, have a, a non thermally constrained piece of silicon in a, in a notebook or a, a, you know, a Mac Mini remains to be seen. But one thing that no one's talking about, I wonder what this means for the high end Macs. Like, what happens to AMD with the Radeon Pros and you know the dual Vega cards that are in the high end Macs? That little GPU in their SOC is not going to overpower big discrete graphics. So there's still lots of questions unanswered. Yeah, and and you know I've actually been watching um, what Apple's been doing uh, at places on LinkedIn, and there's you know job openings and and whatnot going on. Clearly, Apple's strategy to uh, begin to architect and build their own silicon solutions for whatever they can for all the devices they can sell. I'm sure is a a major play from a profitability standpoint. I mean, let's just face it. You know, if you can source your own designs and ICs. Um, you're going to have uh, a much better bottom line number that comes out of it. But you're absolutely right, Marco. I think I think the devil's in the details when you talk about the types of devices and experiences you can power with the type of silicon they have currently for or within the next two years, perhaps even. Um, are you talking desktop class CPUs? I don't know. That might be a stretch. Mobile? Sure. MacBooks? I could see that certainly MacBook Air and, and uh, you know thin and light low power devices. Sure, I could I could see that happening. Uh, I think they've proven that they've got really good chops from a integrated GPU standpoint. You know when it comes to integrated GPUs, um, I don't know. You know, and and then on the on the higher end Mac workstation stuff, I think they're that's a little bit longer longer pole uh, in the tent. But um, you know, it's just uh, it's just one of those things where. I mean, uh, two years. I don't know. It, it, I think that's a that's going to be a uh, a pretty good reach for Apple. We'll we'll have to see how it pans out. Chris, what are your thoughts on this thing? I mean, I think it certainly makes sense for stuff like the MacBook Air, where they're going for uh, you know long runtime, not a lot of power needs to it. I think that the ARM chips are, you know, a, as they get developed and get mature, are going to become more per- powerful than we expect. Are they going to reach the high end desktop, you know, Threadripper? Probably not. Um, but it'll, it'll it'll be interesting to see. Um, and like I said, they, they're under a two year transition, I believe they said. So whether that transition is top to bottom across their line or not, it's going to have an impact. And a lot of it's we got to wait and see. But I also think that interestingly it should mean good things for arm on windows as well um because it's getting more support as a desktop processor you know uh notebook desktop whatever you want to call it um, PC, yeah. right so it's not just in a tablet not just in a phone so i think we're going to see more developer support come out of that even outside the apple ecosystem which should be good yeah, well, interesting. You you mentioned um, the ARM cores, uh, and certainly, you know, that's one one thing we f- failed to mention early on here is that yeah, this is these are custom ARM uh, chips that uh, are ARM based chips, ARM cores that Apple is building with. And um, interestingly enough, there was a headline that broke just this week that um, a new high powered ARM powered supercomputer is now the top. 100 supercomputer uh, in the top 500 it's number one on that list in the world arm powered so you know they've got they've got um you know big iron chops as well in the arm portfolio for sure um whether or not apple can uh, execute within that two-year time frame for all its max will remain to be seen um in terms of its impact on intel again i i think um you know that it, it's not perhaps a, as big a deal as some might think. Um, yeah, here you go. There's a picture of the top 500 ARM-powered supercomputer. Um, but Intel, interestingly, had a statement, and um, we'll, we'll put this one up too. Here's what Intel has to say about Apple's seismic shift to its own chips for Mac. And they came out with a very short statement. And they had to say something, obviously. Um, silence um, is, doesn't necessarily cut it in these types of situations. Um, from the beginning, the Mac has always embraced big changes. Oh, this is, I'm sorry, this is what uh, the folks at Apple said. 
Intel remains, this is what Intel said, <laughs> Intel remains focused on delivering the most advanced PC experiences and a wide range of technology choices that redefine computing. We believe that Intel-powered PCs like those based on our forthcoming Tiger Lake mobile platform provide global customers the best experience in the areas they value most, as well as the most open platform for developers, both today and in the future. Open platform is the key they're, they're thrown in there versus, frankly, what Intel is known for, which is a little bit more closed wall guard, walled garden approach. Um, <clears throat> and I think there was also a bit more to that statement that, that talked about how uh, Apple is a, is a good customer and they will continue to support Apple in the areas uh, outside of you know this processor move. Any thoughts on that statement, Marco? Yeah, I mean, Intel has to say something, as you said, they can't remain silent. But, you know, Apple would have been placing orders for next gen MacBooks and Mac minis, you know, a, probably last year, you know, maybe a year or two lead time on those. So, you know, Intel has probably known about this for a while. Mac market share is small in the grand scheme of things. It's something like 7% worldwide, but it's, it's high with like developers and creators, like 33% or something like that. Yeah. But in the grand scheme of things, it's probably a small number of Intel processors, and it's not going to fall off a cliff. It's going to taper over the next few years. So, yeah, for Intel, I don't think it means it means much. What I think is an interesting conversation is, you know, we talk market share um, for Macs, but now, theoretically, if Apple pulls this off and their entire stack is on their own custom ARM-based silicon, I sort of think you have to count iPhones and iPads. Now, they're really just small computers, and Apple's market share is way bigger if you count everything, like massively bigger if you count everything. So this could mean a seismic shift in the way people develop applications. Who knows? Especially if Microsoft is also embracing ARM. But, you know, for power users, it just regardless of what the supercomputer uh, that just came, that it was a Fujitsu supercomputer. You know, those are really specific, massively parallel workloads. And ARM cores are right. tiny. If you throw a billion ARM cores at something, it's going to friggin' have awesome performance, you know. <laughs> but in the real world where we're sitting in front of a desktop and right now an enthusiast or, you know, a high-end enthusiast or creator or gamer, you need a really fast processor. You need a really powerful GPU. You need tons of memory. You need fast solid state storage. You know, and unless Apple's got plans to go discrete CPU, discrete GPU at some point as well, a, a single SOC is not going to cut it for most people. I, I shouldn't say most people, for most enthusiasts. It will cut it for most people that just tool around on the web, do email, Word documents. All of Apple's native, app, native apps are going to kick ass, I'm certain. But yeah, for enthusiasts, power users, there's there's no stopping AMD, Intel, and Nvidia. Yeah, yeah, it's it's an interesting dynamic for sure. We'll have to see how it goes. And and you know, uh, again, what I think is is very different, and it's what Intel points out about uh, an open system, an open ecosystem. Um, there was another headline that came out: Mac OS Big Sur says goodbye to Windows Boot Camp on new Macs running Apple Silicon. So. Again, you know, you're 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 going to be dealing with the, you know, certainly the compatibility issues here and there, but you're also going to be dealing with Apple's drive, their continual drive to keep users in their ecosystem completely. They they make claims about you know wanting to control the experience to provide a better experience, to have as much control over that experience as possible, to to have their QA and their their quality assurance on that experience. Um, but you know, really, this is kind of the way they operate, right? And so it's it's you know, as you go to this custom silicon, um, you know, this custom Apple silicon, you will continue to see a more closed approach. Come to us for everything. You know, that's. That's what they're good at, and you know, frankly, they're good at it. Certainly, from a, a standpoint of uh, profitability and monetizing for their company, uh, monetizing their products well. So you have to hand it to them for that. Whether or not that's good for end users, I don't know. Is that fair? Yeah, to ask. Very, very, <laughs> very fair to ask. I, I'm, I'm almost <laughs> certain this will not go completely smoothly for, you know, unless. All you use are Apple apps. Like all of the native apps are going to work. I'm positive. But you know, if you have a diverse array of of apps from Adobe, you know, and, and others, I'll 
I'll bet the farm there's going to be weird compatibility issues, despite what the fanboys are going to say. When Rosetta first came out, when they went from Power PC to Intel, you know, the Creative Suite didn't work. And if you bork Adobe Creative Suite and, you know, a large percentage of the other apps out there, or they perform poorly under emulation, which is entirely possible. You know, they showed Rise of the Tomb Raider playing well, but you, you can bet the farm that wasn't with high image quality settings and with all the, the features turned on in the, in the graphics, right? So if performance tanks and you have compatibility issues, you're going to piss off a lot of people. So I this approach of transferring everything over and announcing that it's a two-year transition, I thought was sort of a mistake. I, it would have been better, in my opinion, to just have uh, you know a MacBook Air type platform out there first to show the great battery life and work out all the kinks. Mm. But you know, I don't know. I mean, I could be completely wrong. Apple could knock it out of the park, and they have a notebook that performs well in the last three days on battery. So you know, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's no question. They know how to get, and you, you spoke about efficiency there, power efficiency. They know how to get to do more with less, to really wring performance out of, you know, a square millimeter, square nanometer of silicon. So really, uh, you can't uh, you can't doubt them much in, in terms of their ability to execute on mobile silicon. The question of it making across, you know, the product line in two years – remains to be seen. Nathan yeah. Ord chiming in. Do you guys think ARM processor computers will knock off the lower spec regular CPUs, computers, Ryzen 3 mobile line, Intel lower lines? Um, I think ARM on uh, Windows and ARM on Apple is going to continue to be more and more pervasive for sure. Marco? So I don't think it's going to knock the lower spec x86 CPUs out for a couple of reasons. One, you know Apple's not going to be the cheap, a cheaper option, right? So it's not going to put any price pressure on the lower end chips. And to date, the you know Windows on ARM platforms out there are also not the cheap option. When when uh, the netbook craze hit, yeah. it almost killed the Windel mobile market. You know the x86 mobile devices. Everybody had a really bad taste in their mouth. So I don't think the industry wants to repeat that and drive prices down. It's more about, hey, here's some cool features with enough performance and battery life. So I don't think it's going to do anything to the, the Ryzen 3 mobile or Intel mobile parts. And you know the second question about prices. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to affect pricing either, um, at least for now, unless Microsoft pulls off perfect emulation and every app starts working 32-bit and 64-bit, and then people can start using really inexpensive ARM processors and pull off you know, eight-core mobile devices that have two-day battery life, then I don't see it really banging on Intel and AMD at the low end. Yeah, yeah. I you know, I I think for Apple I think this is a play for them to hit more attractive price points because they are using silicon that they develop and source in-house. <laughs> so, you know, they're going to they're going he's laughing cuz he, he No. Knows, he, I, no, he, I, go ahead, you finish your thought and then I'll come back. Well, no, I was just going to say uh, you know, I obviously it's a profit margin play, but I think it's going to allow them to limbo where they want to um perhaps more than they have in the past. Go ahead. See, I think you're a thousand percent right that it would allow them big savings, but, <laughs> but I don't won't. think they're they're not going to pass it on to the customer, and that's what Apple does. You know, they yeah, they, they develop the platform SE now, right? Yeah, it, it's, which is just like a, an iPhone eight with a different sticker and the processor that they've had for a couple of years. You know, it's it, they didn't innovate no, and bring the price. It's a spare there. parts phone. Exactly. It's a well, spare it's a spare parts, parts phone. phone with current silicon. No, it is an A13 Bionic under the hood. But but that what but. that was was the newer phones not selling well enough. And oh, what are we going to do with all these extra SOCs? That's, well, that's <laughs> my point. That's my point. They got a limbo, man, and and yeah. that's what they're realizing is people aren't you know, in in this day and age, the the tech savvy consumer knows they they're adding up bits and bytes for dollar, and they're not. You know, just signing up like sheep like they used to, you know, so yeah. or maybe not as much. I think I think Apple's dealing with a bit of a new reality, and that's how some of these dynamics are at play. But we'll we'll see. Interesting stuff. And and they're also um scrambling uh, refreshingly to keep up with Android now, which is kind of surprising because you know, the iPhone for a long time was a source of innovation. Now it seems to be a source of iteration. 
And uh, <clears throat> if you were watching the the WWC uh, presentation, Apple iOS, we have a headline, Apple iOS 14 adds back tap actions for iPhone plus more features nabbed from Android. And really, that's what it, that's what occurred to me. You know, they were widgets, widgets, widgets. And um, you know, uh, different sort of hand gestures on the phone. All of this stuff is existing on Android currently from what I saw. Um, even the notification of a phone call coming in or a message coming in, sliding across the top of the phone. I, I got that right now on my OnePlus 8 Pro, had it. And, and oh, by the way, Android's had it since I don't know when. That happens currently. And, you know, but with Apple, it's a magical new feature <laughs> somehow. So it's, you know, we're laughing. I mean, I guess, <clears throat> you know, we don't want to be too Apple negative here, right? I mean, it sounds like we're piling on and, and we are in this case, it's like, man, there's, it's just, it's imitation and iteration. Um, but it's also Apple listening to what works in the market and observing it. And you have to give them credit. They're not afraid to say, you know, this is a good feature, but we're, it's not, we didn't invent it. It's not our style. We're not going to adopt it. They're adopting features. So that's the flip side, positive view of it, right? Yep. I mean, it, it, there's certain popular features on Android. I mean, Apple's history has been known of taking someone else's ideas and perfecting them, making them better. So if something's working on Android and people like it, you can bet it's going to come to iOS in some form or another. So, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really sweat what they do on the software side because in terms of integration and performance, iOS is, I mean... I don't think anyone's yeah. going to say Android performs better than iOS in terms of user experience. So nope. they do a yep. lot of stuff right there. So it, it yep. is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good summary. You're right. You hit the nail on the head. Apple, you know, certainly the user experience, uh, the UI, the the software side of it is a super tight machine. It's what they're known for. It's just interesting. You, you would have hoped at WW, uh, WWDC, you would have seen for iOS 14 something innovative. Really didn't see it. I don't know. Did, did I miss it, Chris? Did you see something? Um, I didn't see too much come out of it. I mean, the widgets are nice to have. I know people have been asking for that on iPhones since the 3GS or whatever. Um, so it's good to see these things. Uh, it's not exciting. It's just nice. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Hey, we got two on in the in the mix. I think the bigger question about Apple ARM transition is about ARM being based. Uh, I don't know. ARM based is being ARM based, but what the isn't what about it being of, ARM based. Oh, but what type of specialized processing units will they embed? Yes, there's that too. Yeah, I mean that, that's. I think actually that's why Apple made their performance claims because if if they develop you know, custom pieces of silicon in there that accelerate certain popular functions, they can say, hey, when these new Macs do this, it's faster than anything else out there. Or when they do this, it's faster than anything out there. And it's not because of, you know, the ARM cores. It's because of a specialized, you know, piece of silicon or engine on the chip. So that is a really big question. They could make some cool stuff in that regard. Yeah. So again, stay in their sandbox and everything will be fine. But as soon as you dip out of that, you'll probably get performance loss. <laughs> exactly. Well, we, we shall see interesting stuff from, from Apple and, uh, you know, amazing times to hear them moving away from Intel. It was a long time ago they moved away from PowerPC to go to x86. I don't know how many decades ago. I guess it was over a decade ago, right? And, um, yeah. yeah, I'm trying to think when that was. But it was a long time ago. And, yeah, it's been, it's been uh, Intel ever since. And so strange, crazy times we're in. We'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, let's move on to something based uh, on Intel as well. The Intel 10th Gen NUC, the mini PC um, extraordinaire product line from Intel. This is a very popular line of products. You know, it's interesting. Intel sometimes is known for getting in and out of technologies and platforms a little too quickly sometimes. Uh, NUC has been a bread and butter uh, portfolio for Intel for a long time now, and they do a real nice job of building powerful PCs in a tiny footprint, a palm-sized footprint, in fact. Marco, you checked out the, um, was it the Bean something, Nuck, the Bean Canyon? It's, it's I think a, this I think one, it's this one bean. is what? This one's Frost Canyon, right? I don't even remember oh, Frost, the code names. You're right. Bean Canyon was the last <laughs> gen. Frosty yep. Canyon. One yep, of the canyons. Exactly. 
<laughs> lots of canyons, lots of canyons. So yeah, he, here it is right here. Let me uh, let me hold it up. I don't see myself, so I'm not sure I'm holding it in the right place. But that is it right there. This particular model, I'm not going to read the long model name, but um, this is the the NUC 10. This particular system that I had in my hands is based on a, a Core i7 10710U, so six core, 12 thread processor that can boost up to 4.7 gigahertz um, base clock of 1.1. And this particular system was actually a pre-configured model. NUCs are known for either being sold as bare bones, where you have to supply your own storage, memory, and OS, or you know you can actually can buy pre-configured. This one was pre-configured with a pretty beefy little setup. So it had eight gigs of DDR4 uh, 2666 Kingston RAM. It had a 256 gig Kingston SSD plus a two terabyte Seagate two and a half inch drive in there for bulk storage. And then because this is based on Intel's latest platform, we have lots of the latest connectivity in there. So Thunderbolt 3, 802.11 AX Wi-Fi, uh, obviously you have USB 3, uh, USB 3 Gen 2 in there, or what is it, 3.2 Gen 2 in there, sorry about that. And yeah, even it has built-in card reader on the side. So overall, if you were to look at the CPU performance and overall system performance, and you disregard the monster high-end NUC. So if you disregard, you know, Hades Canyon and Ghost Canyon, you know, the one with KB Lake G or the latest big monster one um, with the, the compute module, if you compare it to the small 4-inch NUCs, this is, you know, it should be. The latest gen is the fastest NUC overall with the most compute performance, most number of cores. Overall, I really dug it. If you look through the numbers, it's a really strong little performer. But what's really interesting to me were the power numbers. So if you run something like Cinebench that whacks all of the cores, you'll actually see this thing pull 100 watts from the wall for like <laughs> 15 seconds until it's saturated, and then power drops in half and clocks shoot way down. Now, an aggregate performance is still higher for those big, heavy workloads. But yeah, like it's it, Intel is really pushing the envelope here. There, this is not a 10 nanometer chip. It's a 10th gen, but it's it's not a 10 nanometer chip. It'll this little knuckle will pull 100 watts for a few seconds before it cranks back down. It's a pretty wild little setup. Yeah, so 25 watt TDP um, uh, design on that with that processor, right? 25 watt normal. I think the the the. The TDP up is like 28 or, or, or 32. I'm forgetting off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, that number is, that's just a, a number on a piece of paper, in my opinion. Because, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if literally all you got to do is run Cinebench and this thing will pull 102 watts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Six cores, 12 threads. Interesting, interesting stuff. And you can configure up to 64 gigs of RAM. I know you had 16 in there. So 16 was, in, yeah, I think whatever the largest, you know, sodium yeah. you can buy is going to fit in there. I think 32 gigs is the biggest you could fit in there. So 232 yeah. gig sodiums. And of course, NVMe storage, 802.11ax. Nice to have the uh, Wi-Fi 6 in there for that kind of integration in a, in a home theater PC environment, a streaming little streamer box. Um, what other you know, so it's funny. So Tuan just mentioned, yes, Zotac did it first. My wife is still on <laughs> a Core i7-4770 based uh, Zotac mini PC. So it's yeah. the one with the Iris Pro graphics, the 4770R, I think was the model. So, you know, <laughs> it's these aren't just great for home theater builds. Like if you have somebody, I have this conversation a lot when people are asking me about new PCs. Um, you know, most people buy a system, they never open it up, they never upgrade it, they never touch it. If, if you're that kind of user, these NUCs are really awesome little PCs. You know, yeah. my wife's been cranking along for years on that on that Zotac machine. And I know I, I've talked a few people into these NUCs because I knew building them a custom ring was pointless. They're never going to mm -hmm. appreciate it. And these little rigs are fast and cool and they're out of the way. And I don't know. I dig them. And even, yeah, you do. You you tend to be a collector of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, even if I build Chris. custom PCs for people, I'm usually building mini i you know micro mini ITX little towers that they can just tuck out of the way. If they're happy with them. They run fine for general tasks. Yeah. I like the form factors. Yeah. Exactly. In terms of maintenance, though, I'm still if if you can talk someone into a mid tower with ATX stuff. Just in terms of long-term supporting those people, those are the way to go. But yeah, agreed. That's the problem when you talk people into a custom-built PC or even a bare bones. You end up supporting them for too long. <laughs> but we're the nerds. I, all of us are the support people in our families and friends anyway. So whatever. Yep. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. My 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 family somehow I'm always dealing with uh, malware and stuff. I don't know how they get so infected, but they do. It's crazy, unbelievable. <laughs> I know how they're getting infected. <laughs> Chrome you know, extensions. That's a crazy Italians. Yeah. That's well, right. not a, not so much on my side. On the on the wife's side, man. Whew, <laughs> I'm always bailing them out of malware. Anyways, um, and yeah, so. Uh, Tuan said, uh, did, did he send us the Zotac box back in that day? Uh, Tuan spent some time with Zotac. <laughs> if you were there for that stretch, like for the whatever that was, that Haswell, fourth gen? Yeah. It might have been, it might have been you. I don't remember. It's been a lot of years. Yeah. 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 Interesting stuff. All right. Let's talk about uh, something in the mobile space, and then we'll close off with um, some very important details of some giveaways some killer giveaways in, in a few minutes. But uh, let's talk about the Nubia Red Magic 5G. We had Miriam uh, take a look at this for us. Miriam Jor. I'm going to hopefully say that right, Miriam. Um, and uh, so this is an interesting phone from the folks at Nubia. I like stretching out that new sound, you know. And uh, it's um, it's an affordable machine for sure, too, as well. And a, and a crazy fast 144 hertz AMOLED display uh, is based on Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 um, and retails starting at 579. So you've got full 5G sub six and millimeter wave, uh, I believe, um, capability, 4,500 milliamp hour battery, 6.65 inch uh, um, full HD AMOLED display, 24. Uh, 2340 by 1080 resolution 144 hertz and then 8 or 12 gig uh, of ram configs i think that 579 entry level price is on the 8 gig of ram um and up to 256 gigs of storage again i think 579 at 128 gigs of storage um really a decked out phone with onboard cooling too kind of crazy um because it's designed for gamers it's designed to be performant uh, and last uh, in terms of performance, so it has that built-in cooling. I, I can't remember a phone that had active cooling on board. Can you, Marco? <laughs> Not actually in the phone. One of the the Rog Phone Two had that Snap-on fan yeah, adapter. Yeah, but yeah. this guy, it actually has vents and an active cooler in the phone. It's pretty pretty freaking wild. This is a nuts little phone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, in, in terms of performance, I mean, for that price. To get a yep. Snapdragon 865 with a super fast display, that's pretty nuts. Now, what 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 Miriam found though is that other aspects aren't quite as uh, as as high end. Like the software experience and the camera experience is not good to the point to the point where recommending uh, you know installing an unofficial Google a APK is probably the way to go for the cameras. Mm. But yeah, like, if you are just strictly want a crazy fast phone for mobile gaming. I mean, Snapdragon 865 with active cooling and turbo mode and 144 hertz screen for 600 bucks. I mean, that's nuts. That's the Galaxy S20 high end setup is you know 1,200 bucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they they kind of moved in where OnePlus left off. OnePlus came out with the OnePlus 8 Pro and the OnePlus 8, and I, I want to say I'd have to go look at the pricing again, but I think the 8 Pro is around 699. Yeah. That's really the comparison there um, for, you know, call it, geez, I guess it's, uh, you know, a hundred bucks more. Um, so, so really interesting uh, sort of dynamic battery uh, life wise um, in its 90 Hertz config, which, you know, it's a nice high refresh still. It's like number three in our, our uh, uh, PC Mark Android uh, work point 2.0 battery test. So that's a, that's a heck of a lot of uptime. Again, 4,500 milliamp hour battery, uh, 8 and 12 minutes to be exact. Let's see, how many hours is that? That's 13 and a half hours. That's a long time. So, Kevin. you know, there's, there's, some, uh, there's some pretty good features here. Again, if you can, if, if perhaps if camera isn't so much of a concern for you, um, this is a pretty safe bet, right? Yeah, I mean, I... I probably wouldn't go for something like this because of the there's gonna inevitably be dust issues that fan's gonna suck in stuff into the phone who knows what's gonna happen yeah but i don't know man the, the, mobile gaming's huge so I, I don't see this phone being popular here perhaps in in china or it might be a monster i don't know 
Yeah, but, you can find it on Amazon right now. You can buy it unlocked in the States. Um, so it's available here in the U.S. And um, yeah, you made a good point. IP68 water and dust resistance is not a feature. Um, and it is because of that cooling system and a few other things. You're just not going to get it. Um, but Nubia, a, a brand we hadn't ever had in before, uh, started out as a sub-brand of Chinese giant ZTE, but became an independent in 2015. So there you go. The Nubia Red Magic 5G. An unruly Android gaming beast, <laughs> we called it. <laughs> so that's good. If you want to be unruly, it's got check out that design too. That's kind of like a uh, Iron Man kind of look, it's is wild. it not? I think it's a good looking phone. <laughs> <laughs> you like Iron Man, no? You're a big Iron Man fan. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, you get like the red Iron Man, and then you got uh, the 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 you know, gray and titanium. What's that suit called? What do they call it? It's War, War Machine. <laughs> War Machine. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I should know my my Avengers lore. Please excuse me. Um. Yeah. Interesting stuff. All right. Well, let's let's close out on a on an up note here, uh, an even more up note, perhaps. Um. Let's talk about a couple of giveaways we got lining up. Um, with both a killer gaming PC manufacturer as well as the mobile. So we're going to kind of uh, cover both ends of the spectrum here. Uh, PC gaming enthusiasts, uh, performance enthusiasts, as well as handset uh, folks. So what, do you, what can you tell us, Marco? You want to play Santa? Yeah, so I'm going to let you dig into the uh, the EK system specs. But yeah, yeah, we have two two giveaways that are falling into place right now. Like we thought we'd be able to actually give something away in this podcast, but the timing didn't work. So we're going to have five, uh, at least five, TCL 10 Pro smartphones to give away. Um, we're going to, as usual, keep it really simple. A um, couple of little gleam things you got to do, and that'll be it. We may even, if we can figure out a way to do it, just give away some live during the next podcast. We're not quite sure. But yeah, you know, TCL is coming through with a handful of phones, and we have a super high end, water cooled, um, with all EK gear. Um, I believe, Dave will correct me if I'm wrong, all AMD based uh, high end gaming rig with a, a Radeon 5700 XT and a I'm not sure which Ryzen is going to be in there, but a nice custom tricked out gaming rig is going to be given away soon as well. We're going to review review it first so you guys can see exactly what would <laughs> what would be shipped to you. And then, yeah, man, you know, in the, in the next few weeks, a killer rig is going to go to one of you. Yeah, there you go. So um, I just dropped the uh, our review <laughs> of the TCL 10 Pro, which is one which is the phone we're giving away five of. Um, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to launch that. We'll have a Gleam widget going on. We'll uh, announce it uh, certainly for our YouTube audience as well as on Hot Hardware. Um, so stick around for that. And then, yes, the good folks at EK Waterblocks are now called EK Fluid Gaming for their uh, custom boutique gaming PC division have this beauty of a uh, PC270 Conquest machine. Um, that sucker is coming in with... Um, I believe something eight core Ryzen, maybe at least I believe it's at least eight core, and then uh, I believe we're getting a fifty seven hundred XT in there for GPU firepower, and as you can see, some really nice liquid cooling and and also an integrated um, water block there. You can see on the front of the chassis, just a beautifully built machine. We actually saw these. I saw these in person at uh, PAX East in March. EK had mm -hmm. just started uh, waving them. I think you were there too, Chris, right? Yep. Um, just started waving them around a little bit, and uh, man, they look they look pretty dialed, right, Chris? Oh, they were gorgeous. I mean, the just the the horizontal straight piping across them alone is quite an eye catching feature. So very yeah. very clean setup. I mean, obviously they have the RGB, but it's not overly gaudy by any means, um, as some systems can get. Um, and the the front facing. Uh, Reservoir, as, as you said, was just um, very impressive. Yeah, that's that's getting to be popular now, and in EK, um, you know, builds those custom blocks, those water blocks in the front of the chassis that um, they they act as a reservoir as well as a distribution uh, network for the cooling to allow multiple taps, um, you know, to send to the CPU and GPU. I'm not sure if we're going to get cooled GPUs. I think we are. Um, boy, that's going to be a fun system to give away, and someone's going to be real lucky <laughs> for sure. So stop by the site. 
where you can find us on the web at hothardware.com, twitter.com slash hothardware. We'll be announcing both of these contests on the social platforms, facebook.com slash hothardware. Hit thumbs up and subscribe here to the YouTube channel so you get notified when we go streaming with our Two and a Half Geeks webcast, of course, and when we give more details on the contest uh, rollout. Right, Marco? Absolutely, absolutely. And before we go, um, a couple of the guys in the chat joking around saying, hey, let's do a test giveaway now. Um, in all seriousness, mm. Joe and Sanchez, if you've seen other tech channels give stuff away live, we'd love to to see their process and what they did. Because we were trying to figure out, you know, what happens if, a, you know, a miner wins or what happens if somebody outside the shipping area is commenting and they win. And trying to filter all that out live seemed like it, it might be difficult to do. So if you guys have seen somebody do live giveaways, shoot a link in the comments so we can go take a look and try to figure this stuff out. I don't I don't think that EK water block system is getting given away. Oh no, no, not the EK <laughs> system, the phones. The phones, the phones. We, we might give away a couple phones live to incentivize yeah. all you guys that come hang out with us um, when we podcast. But yeah, if you've seen somebody do, you know, smooth giveaways live, I'd love to see the process on so YouTube. You can comment on YouTube. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. Hit the comments and let us know. Give us your advice. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's it for now, folks. Um, so stay tuned. We'll be announcing these giveaways shortly. And in the meantime, swing on by Hot Hardware. Check us out. And we thank you very much for stopping by. <laughs>